Welcome back. In this video tutorial, we are going to look at data visualization using matplotlib and a little bit of Seaborn. To begin, we first import Seaborn as SNS and matplotlib pyplot as PLT and we also need to import numpy as NP. And to make sure that our visualizations are on this Jupyter notebook, we use this magic command percent matplotlib in line. This will ensure that all our visualizations are on Jupyter Notebook. Next, it is important to note that sometimes some libraries might be out of date, so you need to update them. So sometimes when you try to run any command, you'll get some sort of warnings. So in this case, we need to import warning and we can filter out the warnings by using function called filter warnings from warnings library and we can pass ignore as an argument. For this, for this tutorial, we are going to use a data set that is all already preloaded in Seaborn library. We are going to load it using the load data set function from Seaborn and we pass the name of that data set called tips and we can go ahead and take a look at uh, the data set using the head function from sib uh, head function this is from base base python so this one will only show you the first five rows and the columns we see that for this data set we have total bill in dollars and the tip of the amount uh, tip given them the gender of the person paying the bill whether there was a smoker on an or not in the party, the time of the day and the day, and also the size of that party. We can check, we can check the dimension of our data set using the shape.shape .shape keyword. And here we see that we have 244 rows and seven columns. So we're gonna get right into the visualization that we're going to look at. The first visualization we are going to look at is the scatter plot. And using the scatter plot, we are going to examine the relationship between the total bill and tip amount. Here, we are going to use scatter function from, uh, from, from pyplot, from matplotlib. And here we pass what you want to have in the x-axis, which is the total bill. And tip should be on the y-axis. And the edge colors, we specify them to be k. So you can execute that, we see the points. But then looking at the chart, it doesn't look appealing. We have no idea what is x-axis and what is on the y-axis. So in this case, we need to define the x labels and y label using plt x label and y label. You can do you can do this uh, do it in the same cell. So we see that we now have the x and y axis, but we still need to have the title. So we use the title function from pyplot and we give it a title called total bill versus tip. And we need to show the plot. So executing this, we see now we have a scatter plot showing the points. And you see that um, looking at it, the relationship between tips and total bill seems to be a linear relationship. As the total bill increases, also the tip amount increases but looking at the uh, at this scatter plot we don't get as much information as we would like so we need to customize this a little bit and to customize a scatter plot we can add some colors and markers to tweak it a little bit so here to add colors we can specify the colors we you want in a, a dictionary Hereby you see that we have male will be blue and female will be red. And we can also specify the markers that we want. And once you specify the colors and the markers, we see that for the dance smokers, we have something like a circle and an arrow represents the smokers. So here we go through the points that we created and we change them in a bit. So 
using the scatter where we are we are getting the group for the total bill and group for tip and we specify there's another group sex and we use the map function to pass the colors and we specify that our markers is for the smokers and we show that we say that the label are for the smokers and we specify the edge colors to be k and here we are looping through through the the different different groups of the smokers and assigning the markers and also the colors so here you also define what x labels would be also you need to specify what the y label will be in this case we have it to be tip we also need to specify the title for our chart and also we need to specify that we want legend show the legends and make sure that the title of the legend is smoker and we can go ahead and show the plot so if i execute this we see we have a different kind of scatter plot showing different uh, levels of smokers and different shapes so here we have an arrow or a triangle shape and a circle shape showing different different colors we see that for red it represents male uh no scrap that male is blue and female is red and a circle represents uh, non-smokers and the triangle represents the smokers and you can still see the linear relationship that is also evident as the total bill increases and the tip will always increase the next kind of visualization you are going to look at is the histogram and for histogram you can use it to analyze the distribution of total bills and tips so here we are going to have to define two histograms the first histogram is for the total bill whereby you use the hist function from pyplot we pass what you want in the x axis how many bins you want how many how many bins do you want to split the total bill and you also need to specify alpha and the label would be total bill after doing that we need also to specify the histogram for the tip we do the same thing we use his, the hist function from pyplot and we specify that we need the tip column in our tip data set the same number of bins 20 alpha is 0 0.5 and the label is tip and we also need to specify our x axis label and y axis label and as well as the title the same way we've been doing using x label y label and title functions and also we need to display the legend and lastly we show the the plot we execute this we see that um, both histograms have been displayed in the same chart area but looking at it it doesn't show the comparison well so it's always nice to split this into two and have one on the right and the other one on the left so we are going to have two charts so to achieve that we can use something we call subplot from pyplot from matplotlib to actually display histogram for total bills and tips on a separate windows so here we need to use the subplot the subplot function once you specify the number of rows the number of columns you want so you need the two charts to be on the same row in that in that figure basically we're going to have another one here split them into two side by side so you need one row how many columns do you want you need to have two columns and the figure size is 12 by 4 i can actually show just don't assign it if i execute this i see what this means the subplot will create two chart areas on the si one side we call them like um, this is one row because they are horizontal horizontally aligned and 
we also have two columns and the figure size each is 12 by 4. So we can actually assign, unpack it, unpack the subplot into figure into different charts AX1 and AX2. This one is AX1 and the second one is AX2. The next thing we need to do is now on different charts, X chart, we specify the histogram for total bills and uh, we specify the labels. So here on chart one, we plot a histogram that is taking the column total bill from that data set tip, 20 bins and alpha is 0 0.5. And here we specify what the axis labels are and the title. If I execute this, I see that on the left axis, I have a histogram for total bill. So only the only thing that we need to do is, is just copy the same thing down here. We change the axis to be two and this to be tip. So and then we change this to be two, axis two, axis two, and this should be tip amount. So at the end of the day, we have that. So we have, we specify the color that we want on the tip histogram. So if I execute this, I get, I get the two charts. But then you can realize that we have these parameters here showing what we have. Do we really want that? No. So we need to use something we call the tight layout, which is actually looks better. If you can, if you can see the difference, it's not looking so good. But once we use the tight layout, the execute, it looks a bit tight and it fits that page. But we also need to display or to show the plots. It's always a good idea to show plot at the end of that code uh, generating the, the visualizations. So basically we have our charts there. On the left side, we have the total bill. And on the right side, we have the tip amounts and it's orange in color. Here, you can change the color to whatever you want. Maybe you can say this is a red, so you have a red one. And if you want uh, the first histogram to be a different color, you can simply pass that color argument there. You can just um, pass it there and maybe call it green. Let's see, once you pass that, you have different colors of those histograms. So this kind of give you a better way of doing the comparison and you can see the distribution. So the next kind of chart we are going to look at is the box plot. And basically box plot is used to compare distribution of numerical variables across, across different categorical uh, variable levels. So in this case, we are gonna do a comparison uh, of the distributions of total bills and chips across different days. So in this case, we are going to use a Seaborn library to plot the box plots. And so in this case, we plot the box plot whereby the x-axis, the x-axis uh, is day and the y-axis is total bill. Our data set is tips and we specify our title to be total bill distribution by day. That's for one plot. And then we go ahead and do the same for uh, for the tip. So in this case, it's just the same thing, but we pass different columns. And we can go ahead and execute this. Here, we see that we have now two charts, which are horizontal, uh, vertical, vertically aligned. One for box plot showing the total distribution by day and another one for tip distribution by day. And that's how you can do box plots. The next one we are going to do is um, the bar plot. And for this bar plot, we can use it to compare average total bill and tip amounts between smokers and non-smokers. So how do we do that? Here, we simply say we group by first. We group by smokers, so we create a variable called group by smokers. We pass our, our data frame called tips, and then we group by using the group, group by function, 
we group by smokers. So what happens is that the data set is grouped by smokers and then we pass this, we select these two columns, total bill and tip in that group, group data and then we get the mean because for this bar plot it's gonna use the mean, uh, the group by smokers for those two columns aggregated by mean. So here after doing all that we now use the, the plot function, plot function and we pass the kind of chart that we want and we are doing that for whatever we created up here for grouped by smokers. If I execute this I get a chart. Is yes, no smokers. That doesn't look too good. So we need to specify our what our y-axis is and what the titles are. So we execute. So we see we have now a title and and y-axis. We also need to to change some few things. You see that the x-axis the x-axis has yes and no. We need to format that to be either smokers or non-smokers. So in this case we need to add this plt x ticks to format. We say we want the ticks to be 0 and 1 and the labels is smokers non-smokers. Actually we know this is smokers so we need to interchange this. We need to interchange that because we, we know that this is yes is for smokers and no is non-smokers. So we pass those as the labels and as you can see this doesn't look so good uh, having them as uh, vertically orientation. So in this case we need to specify the rotation. Zero means horizontal and one means vertical. So we need to change that and rename uh, yes to be smokers and not to be non-smoker. And finally we need to show the plot. So executing this we now get a better looking bar plot showing average total bill and tip amount by smokers. On the y-axis we have amount in dollars and then on the x-axis we have smokers and for each of those two levels it's showing bars for total bills and tips. So we see that the smokers seems to be paying bills, uh, huge bills as compared to non-smokers but for the tip paid or the tip given seems to be fairly or relatively equal. But you can do some other tests to, to see if these tips are the same. You can do something like t-test but that's not within the scope of this. So and that's how we, we do the, the bar plots by different categories. But looking at this sometimes comparing two levels side by side is not so good, it's not so appealing. So you might want to do what we call stacked bar plot. So we are going to use stacked bar plot to compare the number of bills by each sex across different days. And to do that because we have two, we have sex and day. So we need to group our data set as a uh, group by day and sex column. So here we need to create a variable called grouped by day and sex and then we group by day and sex. Just pass those two columns as, um, as a list and you can go ahead and execute just to have a feel of how the data look like. So this doesn't show you anything, it just say is pandas.co group by generic blah 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 all that. And now from that we can get the sizes. So basically it's like you're counting for each of those levels. So we see that we have day, sex and then we have the count. So from there we need this to look like a data frame. And to do that we use a function called unstack. So once I unstack and print this again, I see now we have something like look like a data frame with columns and rows. It's a named with some named columns and named rows. So 
now we need to plot our our stacked data frame here we use the stack uh, plot function as we've done before we specify that the kind is bar and then if i execute this this is what i get i get the bars side by side so how do i ensure that i get the stacked to ensure that i get stacked bar plots i specify stacked equal true if i execute this now i get this stacked bar plots but this doesn't look too good because we don't have axis specified and we don't have a title so in that case we need to specify what our y axis is and what our title is and finally we need to show bar plot or we need to show our plot or our chart so executing this i get uh, the bill bill paid by sex across different days as our title and on the y axis we have number of bills and we have a legend legend labels for sex we have male and female and then on the x axis we have day remember i told you you can use the ticks you can use the ticks to change all these values but you can play around with that but in case you need to know the code let me know in the comment section and i realize that some people are watching my videos without subscribing so please do remember to subscribe that would be super helpful like the video and leave a comment so looking at this chart probably there's more that we can do with it you might want to change some patterns some patterns and some other things that to look a bit appealing so in this case we can customize this stacked bar chart and to customize it we need we need to import uh from matplotlib we need to import colors and tickers this will allow you to have different colors and also specify some patterns that you would want the bar chart uh, bar plots to display and we can do the same thing that we did group by group by day and sex we first group by day sex and then we get the size for each and then on the resulting data um, we unstack to form a, a data frame with named rows and columns and then here we need to specify some patterns that you would want and you also need to specify some color lists so here we have two colors that you would want to to use in your charts and you need to go over to plot the charts and for each bar you need to loop over and do some things so in this case you need to use a subplot uh, from pyplot to kind of get the chart area we assign the fig uh, the figure or you basically unpack the subplots into two the figure and the axis in this case we're going to have only one axis but if you wanted more than one axis you need to specify some parameters like the way we did for for the histogram you can go back and check how to to make those changes then the next thing you need to do is using a for loop you need to plot each bar and assign different parameters here we need to enumerate and we need to use a zip function using the columns for the group by sex for those columns zip and then you pass the pattern now these two patterns this is for basically for the first column and the second column here we are going to have i and we have sex and pattern remember we need to specify the column that we want to use from that group by function group by day and sex we need sex and the pattern could be for sex remember so these patterns if looking at this we need to apply the pattern to these bar charts and because we already grouped by male and female or group by sex we need those for sex so after using the for loop now we can loop over those bars and do that so we need first to get the index we pass the column that you want and then you see bottom group by sex i lock now this is just selecting which which um 
which column you want to get the sum for. So we first select this part. Basically, we are selecting all. It's like you're selecting all the rows and all the column until I. So you're, it's like you're selecting one bar at a time. And we get the sum for the columns. And we apply the color from the color list. Remember, we have two colors, one at a time. And we say that hatch equal pattern. And our pattern is, is uh, from this list. You see, we have patterns. So we are looping over one at a time. Remember, we have two. So we assign that pattern. You say hatch is equals to pattern. And then the label is sex. So we need the legend in a way. Then after doing that, we need to specify the X and Y axis labels as well as the title. And to do that, we use that X label, set X labels and set Y label functions and set title. And we can go ahead and say that we want our labels to be our legend to have a title sex. And we can go ahead and show the resulting chart. We can execute this and you see we have now these patterns. The patterns, remember these lines, we specified them here. On the top one, we have those, uh, those patterns. You can actually tweak it a little bit. You can have different patterns for, for those stacked charts. You can have, you can specify different ones like that. And if I execute, I now see that we have different patterns on top and bottom. You can have whatever. You can have circles. Yeah, whichever pattern you want. You can have X, so you have those crosses. So you can actually play around with this. Your choice, whatever you want, you can get. So basically, that's just to show you how you can, you can customize those stacked bar plots. The next thing we are going to look at is how to create pie charts. Pie charts. So for pie charts, uh, in our case, we can use them to show the proportions of the numbers, number of bill, bills paid by each sex. So the first thing you need is the count. And to get the count, we first select our column is sex. And using the function value counts, we get the, the counts for either male and female. But for the pie charts, we need to have percentages rather than the counts. So here we specify that we need the sex count as the source of data that's gonna use to create the pie chart. The label is whatever the index for that was, which is sex count. Basically in this case, it's gonna be male and female. And then we specify that we need auto percent and we pass some formattings. In this case, we say that we only need the percentages to have one decimal place. And that's how we, we can do the formatting. So we can execute this. So we see we have our pie chart, but there's this, there's lots of things that's being printed here. So, and we don't have a title. So here you need to include a title, bills paid by sex. So, but then you still need to show the title else this, this doesn't look so good. It's showing you all the elements of the pie chart that has been created and including the parameters, but we need to show the plot if you want it to be printed, uh, to be shown in a better looking way. So you only need to show the plot, not the other specifications for that chart or the pie chart. So here we see that we have now been able to create a pie chart showing bills paid by sex. And we see that uh, for males are the biggest, uh, have the biggest proportions of the number of times the bills are paid. So basically, men pays more in this context. Probably in some other context, maybe females pay more, which is likely likely to be to create a debate anyway. So that's how you can do a pie chart. Then these are not on the only charts that you can create. We can actually explore some other different uh, plots. For example, we can explore a chart called KDE plot, which is kernel density estimation 
uh, chart. So in this case, is from Seaborn. So using Seaborn, uh, we can use the function called KDE plot, and we pass our data that we want to use. And then on the x-axis, we specify that we want the total bill. And then on the y-axis, we want a tip amount. And then we want to, to partition them by sex or to show uh, different categories of sex or color code them with sex. And then we are going to use cmap equal this name, Viridis. I can't re read the name well, but just use it the way it is. And after that, we do our usual things. We need to specify the X labels, Y labels, and the title, and eventually show the plot. So executing this, we get this kind of kernel density estimation of the total bill versus tip. We have our legend for sex, male and female, showing that the blue line is for male and the orange is for female. And we see that uh, the center of the kernel density shows where the points are densely uh, located. It's more denser around the center of that kernel density estimation chart or those lines. So we see that it's around maybe 2.1 and around 13 for the total bill. But anyway, that's how you can, you can create the kernel density estimation chart. The next chart we can have a look at, it's called hex bin plot, which can be used to visualize the density of the data points for the total bills versus the tip amount given. So here we use a hex bin function from pyplot. We pass the column that you want on the X axis and the column that you want on the Y axis. You specify the grid size to be 20 and then we use the cmap viridis, and yeah, whichever the pronunciation of that word is. And then after that, we need to do our usual thing, specify the x-axis and y-axis labels using pyplot. And also we need to specify the title. So I'll go ahead and execute that. So we see this hex bin plot of total bill. And we have on the x-axis tip amount and bill, total bill on the x-axis. But we don't know the legend. We don't know the scale or the key. We need to know what these colors mean. So here we need to use something we call color bar to show what those, um, those colors mean. Execute that. I see that the different colors and it shows that the blue, uh, the darker it is on the lower side, it shows that it's the tips um, are not concentrated. But as you go up the color bar, the points are densely uh, populated in around this area. The greener it is or whatever this color is on that spectrum, the denser it is. And then we need to set the X, um, set the labels for the legend or oh, that color bar. So that's the chart, but we still need to show the chart. It's always good to do that. So we see our chart, a hex bin plot showing the total bill versus tip or the density of both points using this color bar showing the higher you go the density of those points goes up or increases or forever and that's basically it for this uh, tutorial if you have any questions you can post them on uh, the comment section and please do remember to subscribe like and share my videos that will be super helpful for me and and it shows that you appreciate my work. Thank you. See you in the next video.